हेलो पार्टिसिपेंट्स दिस इज लोकेंद्र कुमार प्रोफेसर ऑफ फिजिक्स एंड प्रिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेटर मोलिकुलर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स रिसर्च ग्रुप फिजिक्स डिपार्टमेंट यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ अलाहाबाद फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ दिस रिफ्रेशर कोर्स इन फिजिक्स ज्वाइंटली ऑर्गेनाइज बाई टीचिंग लर्निंग सेंटर रामानुज कॉलेज डेली यूनिवर्सिटी एंड हरीशचंद पी जी कॉलेज वाराणसी अंडर पंडित मदन मोहन मालवीय नेशनल मिशन ऑन टीचर्स एंड टीचिंग स्कीम मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया टूडे द टॉपिक ऑफ माई लेक्चर इज फोटोफिजिक्स ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक इन ऑर्गेनिक हाइब्रिड प्रोस्काइट थिन फिल्म एंड चैलेंजेस इन प्रोस्काइट सोलर साल टेक्नोलॉजी I understand this topic is uh, very very important at this time, and it will be definitely very ben beneficial for the new newly joined faculty members, assistant professors, and other faculty members. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you about my group. at uh, university of allahabad here this is a molecular electronics research laboratory and uh, our group is actively working in the area of photovoltaics and uh, other flexible devices so the long term goals and current research activities at my group is design and development on inorganic organic hybrid proskite solar cells integration the proskites into tandem structure and installation photovoltaic modules to produce power for 25 years or more bringing the emerging technology a step closer to commercial deployment so the facilities in our laboratory is uh, funded by science and engineering research board department of science and technology new delhi and uh, other funding from department of science and technology new delhi here i have uh, several uh, national and international uh, collaborations like we have collaboration with the uh, national physical laboratory and uh, the perdi university united states of america we have several facilities state of art facilities of fabrication of uh, thin film solar cells transistors or any transistors and uh, under inert environment and uh, several characterization facilities including x-ray diffractometer solar simulator and uh, photoluminescence measurement systems so renewable energy resources are very popular in these days and they are wind power hydro electricity biomass solar energy geothermal so the motivation uh, here is towards the solar energy which is very popular and most of the participants are are well aware about this uh, solar energy and photovoltaic devices so basically solar cells comprises the technology that generates electricity when sunlight falls on it a light quant is translated into electrons and then we get the electricity so the scheme of my lecture is i will briefly discuss about the introduction and uh, a new paradigm in photovoltaics then i'll discuss the photophysics of organic inorganic hybrid proskites and their thin films 
सोलर सेल्स fabrication and characterization will all also be discussed here and finally what are the fundamental challenges for economic viability of proskite solar cell technology will be discussed in detail and then i will conclude the talk okay so let me start uh, with a very fundamental slide most of the participants might be aware with this uh, uh, word semiconductor actually semiconducting word was firstly used by alessandro volta in 1787 and it is uh, available in the literature and charles fritz developed developed first functional solar cell which was a short key diode based solar cell gold selenium layer based cell and uh, its efficiency was less than a percent but the solar cell work has uh, great popularity in 1959 when bell lab scientists announced that we have solved the problem of energy and we will get energy without any cost so and they design and develop first silicon solar cell with power conversion efficiency of 6% it was a big news at that time and uh, it was published in uh, very uh, important this has important research papers as well as uh, so many newspapers too like new york times and etc and today we have multi junction uh, under concentrated illumination uh, pn junction solar cells which which has the efficiency of about more than 40 7% So let me start with this very busy chart of best research cell efficiencies with respect to time scale So this is a very busy chart but I really like it in my in my lectures because it covers the full history of uh, progress of solar cells actually so if you see in this uh, chart we have mainly four colors violet blue green and red so these are basically these are the generations of solar cells actually and they are showing the progress of these four generations so if you see here the crystalline silica is the basis for 90% of commercial photovoltaic devices but silicon photovoltaics are still expensive to process they are manufacturers manufacturer produces toxic toxic by a products and this blue line if you see it it uh, represents the progress of uh, silicon solar cells crystalline silicon solar cells their efficiencies are about 27% and they are commercially available we have some other cells also as discussed here in the upper part of this chart there are multi junction cells based on gallium arsenide and other materials these are concentrators gallium arsenide concentrator solar cell their efficiencies are pretty good 47% and here the green chart green curve 
It is dedicated to thin film technologies based on cadmium telluride, amorphous uh, silicon and CIGS concentrated cells. So their efficiencies are also here like 23% like that. They are also very popular. They are thin film technology based solar cells. So if you see the progress of all three types of solar cells are pretty good and silicon technology of silicon solar cells are available in the market. But if you see the progress, this progress in all three technologies is in more than 40 years. And here this red region red graphs of uh, this chart these are dedicated to the emerging photovoltaics and represent the progress of the emerging photovoltaics so emerging photovoltaics are disensitized solar cells proskite solar cells organic flexible foldable plastic solar cells and cj T, S, S, E, inorganic cells and quantum dot cells. So this work was started in 1990 and disensitized solar cells and organic solar cells, polymer solar cells are popular in last few decades. Their progress is also pretty good, more than 13% efficiency. And here if you see one more graph, this red, uh, red line filled with yellow color, it represents the progress of proskite cells. So proskite solar cells are also emerging photovoltaic devices and their progress is very very good and the motivation of the work starts from here. The progress is good, we have more than 23% efficiency solar cells and these solar cells emerged from the progress of organic and disensitized solar cells. And in few years, like less than a decade, they, their efficiency is reached up to 22%. So they are, they have great promises for the coming technology. Okay. Now, how we organic inorganic hybrid perovskite solar cells emerge actually? So, as I already mentioned, some work on plastic solar cells, organic solar cells were there, and disensitized solar cells progress was also good at that time in 2009. So some of the scientists uh, named Miyasaka and co-workers in 2009 used some proskite material in disensitized solar cells and that so so very good efficiency, 3.8% at that time. And after an initial slow following, proskite solar cells has created a tsunami effect in the photovoltaic community and their power conversion efficiency is reaching over more than 22.7%. And now it is about 24%. So, these cells basically emerged from 
organic photovoltaics and dye synthesized solar cells. So I would like to little bit mention about the organic solar cells first and then I will come to the proskite solar cells because their designs and geometries are similar. There is a difference of photoactive material only and some other electrodes. So here if you see there is a wide application space for organic photovoltaics and organic photovoltaics basically these solar cells including non-traditional application such as building integrated and wearable photovoltaics. So you can see here flexible solar cells made by plastics. Their efficiency is pretty good and research is in progress. These are some other examples. Portable electronics, smart fabrics. So people started working on organic materials. Organic uh, poly, organic materials or organic semiconductors are little bit different than the inorganic one because they have high absorption coefficient, they are low processing cost, large area devices can be fabricated is easily, flexible devices we can fabricate with the organic semiconductors and organic semiconductor based solar cells are the excitonic solar cell because here excitone binding energy is 0.2 to 0.4 electron volt which is uh, little high so at room temperature this uh, excitone uh, don't break actually and their small excitone diffusion length is there so these are the this is a comparative table in between uh, inorganic materials and organic one So these are the some molecules or examples of uh, conjugated polymers and small molecules. They are available in the form of powder and we can make the solution of these polymers or small molecules in some organic solvents and then we can spin coat these material on the glass, conducting glass and then we can fabricate the solar cells. These are some architecture of organic solar cells. We have a transparent conducting electrode and then there is a layer of organic material and then top electrode may be aluminium or silver or gold whatever is required. So here what exactly happens? We sandwich the photoactive materials in between two electrodes and one electrode is optically transparent. So this is the these are some bilayer solar cells, bulk hydrogen some solar cells. So here the important point is we need to sandwich the photoactive material in between two electrodes and when we shine the light then what exact exactly happens here this is a another uh, slide which is also represent when we shine the light here from the ITU side then there is a formation of an excitone and this excitone breaks and we get electrons and ele holes the respective electrodes. So this is the operation of, of a organic solar cell here when we shine the light the formation of exciton firstly absorption of incident photon and then a creation of exciton then exciton diffusion to donor acceptor levels then these exciton breaks and then we collect 
the charges to the receptive electrodes. Now, the important point is in the organic solar cells basically, this excitone has large binding energy. Excitone is nothing, everybody might be knowing it. This is a electron and hole pair which is joined which is joined together by the Coul Coulombic force. So uh, these positive negative charges they are bind together with some Coulombian force. So we need some energy to break. So we make the acceptor and donor kind of combination here so that this exciton breaks so some voltage we can give here at the interface so that electron hole can be separated out. I will be discussing in details what is exactly happening in the cross side one but I just want to tell you a brief introduction of organic solar cell because proskite solar cell is a emerging technology which comes out through the understanding of organic solar cell and dye sensitized solar cells. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, this uh, uh, current voltage curve of a solar cell which is a very very well known picture or a plot in between voltage and current here. So in the dark, the solar cell or photovoltaic device act as a diode and when we shine the light, then you see we have another curve which is given here and it cuts at on x-axis which gives you the VOC and on y-axis we have current so we have JSE and the squareness of this curve give us the field factor. So this is very important to understand here what is VOC, what is JSE and what is field factor. Actually these are the diode equations and uh, these diode equations might be understand uh, everybody and uh, very simple to know. So here if you see fill factor is uh, really important and if you see the power conversion efficiency of a so solar cell depends on VOC, JSC, fill factor and power incidence. So here for good or for, for an efficient solar cell we need high VOC value, high JSC value and high fill factor value. Fill factor is nothing but it is a uh, J max V max divided by JSC and VOC. So if we uh, calculate fill factor it will be always less than 1 and also we can calculate the quantum efficiency and this is also available in the literature what is the quantum efficiency, what is the internal quantum efficiency, external quantum efficiency. So it is just uh, very very easy to understand means how many electrons in external circuit with respect to the number of incident photon. It is the external quantum efficiency and the internal quantum efficiency is the number of electron in the external circuit divided by actual number of photon absorbed. So these, these are the three formulae to understand efficiencies, power conversion efficiency, internal quantum efficiency, external quantum efficiency. So very very simple and very very important here. Okay, so this was a little story of organic solar cell. Means organic solar cell, it is it is not like silicon one, silicon solar cell is a, it is a inorganic solar cell made or fabricated by semiconductor, well known semiconductor silicon. 
द ऑर्गेनिक सोलर सेल वी यूज ऑर्गेनिक सेमी कंडक्टर्स और पॉलीमर्स प्लास्टिक्स सो दीज पॉलीमर्स आर इजीली प्रोसेसेबल एंड वी कैन फैब्रिकेट द डिवाइसेस विद दीज पॉलीमर्स दे आर कंडक्टिंग पॉलीमर्स और कंजुगेटेड पॉलीमर्स आई शुड से एंड देयर आर सम स्मॉल मॉलिक्यूल्स आल्सो सो नो लेट मी कम टू माय मेन बिजनेस फॉर दिस टॉक दैट इज पेरोस्काइट सोलर्स व्हाई पेरोस्काइट सोलर्स actually perovskite materials are organic inorganic hybrid materials and they are also available in the powder form and we can also make the solution of these materials and we can easily fabricate these materials on the conducting glasses or transparent conducting glasses i should say then the beauty of these materials is they have strong solar absorption low non radiative carrier recombination rate and they have ability to capitalize and very interesting if you see here the organic lead trihalide prosite materials their general formula is abx3 Where X is anion, A and B are cations of different sizes. A is bigger than B, and here let me give you some examples. A B X three. It is a proskite structure in which X is light, as given below. Methyl ammonium lead triiodide. So here X is halide, B is lead, inorganic one, and CH3 and H3 it is A, it is organic one. So in this proskite structure, this organic molecule is in the cage of this proskite structure. and here the tetrahedras are are made by our lead and iodide and the complete structure with several this kind of units make a proskite structure proskite is not a new name or new structure it is from several years we are aware with inor inorganic proskites several piezoelectric materials are available and they are commercially available they have proskite structures but this is this one is quite new because here this is a organic inorganic hybrid proskite and it has very very interesting features very very interesting physics very very interesting chemistry and very very interesting electronics and it is very promising material for solar cells and here if we just change the values of several halides like if let me replace i by br bromide it so another interesting property which is very promising for leds also so i will be starting my my talk from this place now let us discuss the properties their thin films and their solar cells how we fabricate these materials and how it works what is the what is their photophysics and the current research progress of this kind of proskite solar cell 